The Battle of the Vistula River, also known as the Battle of Warsaw, was a Russian victory against the German Empire and Austria-Hungary on the Eastern Front during the First World War. Chapter 1 – Background By mid-September 1914 the Russians were driving the Austro-Hungarian army deep into Galicia, threatening Krakow, and the Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia was floundering. The armies that the Russian commander Grand Duke Nicholas was assembling in Poland were still enlarging, including the arrival of crack troops from Siberia, freed by the Japanese declaration of war against Germany on 23 August. Stavka intended for the forces assembled south of Warsaw, 500,000 men and 2,400 guns, to march west to invade the German industrial area of Upper Silesia, which was almost undefended. On their eastern front the Germans had only one army, the 8th, which was in East Prussia. It already had mauled two Russian armies at Tannenberg, and at the first battle of the Masurian Lakes. To support the reeling Austro-Hungarian armies, OHL formed a new German 9th Army in Silesia, to be commanded by General Richard von Schubert, with Erich Ludendorff, transferred from 8th Army, as Chief of Staff. Ludendorff quickly evaluated the situation in Silesia and convinced the new commander at OHL, Erich von Falkenhayn, to strengthen the 9th Army and also to make Paul von Hindenburg commander of both German armies in the east. By the end of September, 9th Army, with headquarters in Breslau, consisted of the 17th, 20, 11, Guard Reserve Corps, Graf von Bredo's Lantia Division, 8th Cavalry Division, and the 35th Reserve Division with Wush's Lantia Corps linking the German army with the Austro-Hungarian forces on the right. According to Preet Buttar, several Siberian divisions were now gathered around Warsaw, and it seemed likely that these would march southwest to support a westerly drive by the forces of Southwest Front. In order to oppose this, Konrad and Ludendorff agreed, the KUK army would extend its northern flank north of the Vistula, and the German 9th Army would then take up positions alongside. On 28 September, the Germans started their advance, while Dankel's 1st Army crossed the Vistula, reaching Bogoria on 1 October. On 30 September, the Germans reached Przedborz, and Radom five days later. The Russian response was for Ruski to advance towards Kalish, while Ivanov's 2nd, 4th, 9th, and 5th Armies concentrated along the Vistula. The Russian 3rd and 8th Armies would remain in Galicia. Chapter 2 – Engagement of Apatov Klimantau To face the threat from Silesia, the Russians withdrew men from East Prussia, and from the front facing the Austro-Hungarians the geographical barrier that separated the bulk of the opposing armies was the Vistula River. The Russian corps marching north to fill the gap moved along the east bank of the Vistula, which protected their left flanks. The troop movements involved both the southwest front commanded by Nikolai Yudovich Ivanov and the northwest front under Nikolai Ruski. Their movements were poorly coordinated dot to guard the crossings for their 4th and 9th armies, on the west bank of the Vistula the Russians deployed the 75th Reserve Division at Radom, as well as the group of General Del Sol, consisting of the Guard Rifle Brigade, 2nd Rifle Brigade and 80th Reserve Division, at Apatov Klimantau. Both groups were screened by the cavalry divisions of the Corps Novikov. On 28 September German 9th Army began a meticulously planned advance toward the Vistula River. German 11, Guard and Austro-Hungarian I Corps marched in heavy rain toward Del Sol's group. Because German army wagons were too heavy for the woeful Polish roads, submerged in several feet of mud, they used light Polish carts hired along with their peasant drivers. As they advanced they improved the roads and bridges, so they could support heavy artillery and adjusted the rails to the narrower European gauge. Explosives were cached at road and railway bridges, so they could be destroyed if necessary. On 6 October, Dankel's 1st Army cavalry had reached Sandomiesch, and though the Russians lost 7,000 of General Delsol's infantry killed or taken prisoner near Apatov, the remaining forces had withdrawn across the Vistula. On 7 October, Archduke Joseph Ferdinand's 4th Army captured Zheshev, while Svetozar Borovic's 3rd Army advanced towards Peshemysl. 
On the 11th of October, Austro-Hungarian troops captured Yaroslav and 5,000 prisoners, but once, again, the Russians were able to withdraw across the San River. Chapter 3, Battle The Germans reached the Vistula River on the 9th of October. The few Russian bridgeheads on the west bank were invested. Their left flank, August von Mackensen's 17 Corps, continued to march north until it was 19 kilometers from Warsaw. Only small Russian pockets remained on the west bank, they were excellent targets for the German artillery. General Nikolai Ruski, commander of the Russian Northwest Front, sent troops from Warsaw to attack 17 Corps on the German left flank. Orders found on the body of a Russian officer revealed that 14 Russian divisions were concentrating against Mackensen's five divisions. The Germans were also privy to Russian movements, from intercepted wireless messages. Unlike the messages sent in the clear during the first weeks of the war, now they were in the new Russian code, which by the end of September had been broken by a German reserve officer, Professor Deutner. Three Russian armies were concentrating against German 9th Army, relieving the pressure on the Austro-Hungarians in the south. On the 10th of October, the Russians were ordered to attack from their positions along the Vistula. The Russian 4th Army was deployed with its 14, 17 and Guards Corps along the Lower San and Vistula. North of them was the 9th Army with the 16th, Grenadier, and 3 Caucasian Corps. 5th Army was still be deployed north of them, while closest to Warsaw was the 2nd Army, consisting of 1, 27 and 2 Siberian Corps. On 13 October, Grand Duke Nikolai placed command of the 2nd and 5th Russian armies under the command of the Northwest Front, responsible for the major thrust into Poland, while the Southwest Front tied down the German and Austro-Hungarian armies along the Vistula. However, on the 11th of October, the German 9th Army 17 Corps, under the command of Mackensen, was to attack Warsaw, securing the 9th Army's northern flank. Mackensen was within six miles of Warsaw, when a set of orders were found on a Russian staff officer corps. According to Butar, for the first time, the Germans became aware that they were facing no fewer than four Russian armies, which intended to roll up the German line from the north. It now became the intention of Hindenburg and Ludendorff to try to tie down as much of the Russian strength as possible, thus allowing the KUK army to achieve a victory against weaker forces in the south. On 10 October, Conrad ordered the Austro-Hungarian 3rd and 4th armies to cross the San, but by 12 October they had not made any headway, even the 1st army failed to establish a bridgehead. Though the Austro-Hungarians had 36 divisions in Galicia compared to 26 for the Russians, but the Russians had more guns, and were fighting from defensive positions. On the 11th of October, Conrad sent the 1st Army's V Corps to Ozero to reinforce the Germans along the left bank of the Vistula. On the 12th of October, the Russians succeeded in establishing a bridgehead at Ivan Gorot. The Russians attacked Mackensen on 16 October after two days of bombardment. Ludendorff requested Conrad send his 1st Army in response, but Conrad only agreed to send his 7th Cavalry Division. Muxen's eastern flank was threatened as Fleev's Russian 5th Army crossed the Vistula. Asked if he could hold his position until 18 October, allowing Hindenburg to withdraw to the southwest, Mackensen responded. I will hold until 19 October. By then Russian cavalry had bypassed his western flank and threatened to cut him off to the south. Mackensen was then forced to withdraw, while Grand Duke Nikolai ordered a general offensive for 20 October. By 20 October, Radko Dmitriev's Russian Third Army had established five bridgeheads across the San, which Ferdinand's Austro-Hungarian Fourth Army was unable to dislodge. On the 22nd of October, Alexei Brusilov's Russian 8th Army recaptured Stridge. As the German and Austro-Hungarian forces withdrew to the west, Conrad planned an ambush of the Russians crossing at Ivan Gorot. As Sergei Shiedman's Russian 2nd Army advanced, Dankel's 1st Army was to strike north against the southern flank of the Russian bridgehead on the 22nd of October. Dankel's attack faltered, 
while the next day his eastern flank was threatened by Russian troops crossing the Vistula at Poloi. According to Butar, Conrad's plan to crush the Russians in the process of crossing the river, always a risky venture, would now face the combined strength of the Russian 4th and 9th armies. As the German Guards Reserve Corps advanced towards Kozienis, at the western end of the Ivangorok bridgehead, another Russian bridgehead opened at Kazimierz Dolny, to the rear of Dankel's eastern front. On 25 October, the Russians advanced. On 26 October, the German Guards Reserve Corps retreated towards the southwest, along with the German 9th Army to avoid its western flank from being turned, forcing Dankel's 1st Army to also retreat. The Austro Hungarian 1st Army, which was taking over the German right flank, was unable to defend the crossings over the Vistula. The Germans claimed that they deliberately allowed the Russians to cross, then intending to engulf them. According to the Austro Hungarians, they arrived too late to prevent the crossings. In any event, the Russians were able to bring enough men quickly over the river to force the Austro Hungarians to retreat to a line 60 kilometers to the west. According to Max Hoffmann, the third ranking member of 9th Army staff, they pulled back without alerting the nearby German units, they escaped only because they were warned by a German telephone operator. In fact the Austro-Hungarians did properly inform their allies. Chapter 4, Aftermath According to Butar, both the German and the Austro-Hungarian commanders attempted to emphasize that they had been forced to retreat because their allies had not delivered what was required. Despite taking an estimated 12,000 Russian prisoners, First Army had lost over 40,000 men, and had failed to eliminate any of the Russian bridgeheads across the Vistula. On 30 October, the Russians reached Ludge. The Germans calculated that until extensive repairs were finished the furthest the Russians could advance over the devastated countryside was 120 kilometers, so they would have some weeks respite before the Russians could invade Silesia, but they had been forced back. They portrayed the withdrawal as a strategic maneuver, and had succeeded in blocking an enemy advance into Germany for weeks, while their army was trying to win on the Western Front. The retreat, filled the Russian army with confidence in its strength to deal with Germany. Now Russian troops had beaten both Germans and the Austro-Hungarians. But they dissipated their advantage by indecision about their next move and confusion in their administrative arrangements on 1 November, Hindenburg was given command of all of the German forces on the Eastern Front. Mackensen was promoted as commander of the 9th Army, the majority of which was deployed by rail to Thorn, so as to threaten the Russian northern flank. Yet, for the Austro-Hungarian forces, in the words of Butar, all the gains of the October campaign were to be abandoned, and a new line would be held through the winter, running along the Carpathians and then to Krakow. Chapter 5 Order of Battle on 1 October 1914 Chapter 5 Section 1 Russian Forces Russian Northwestern Front Commander-in-Chief, Nikolai Ruski Prinarevskaya Group Commander, Bobirev Warsaw Fortifications 27 Corps Nova Georgievsk Fortress Garrison 6th Cavalry and Caucasus Cavalry Divisions, Guards Cossack Brigade, 1st Astrakhan Cossack Regiment. 2nd Army. Commander, Sergei Scheidemann. End of September consisted of. I Corps. 23. Corps. 2nd Army Reinforcements. 2. Corps transferred 3 October from 1st Army. I Siberian Corps arrived in Warsaw 27 September, October 1st from the interior. 2. Siberian Corps diverted to Warsaw from 10th Army, arrived 8 October. 50th Infantry Division 10 October arrived in Warsaw from St. Petersburg. 4. Corps mid-October, arrived in Warsaw from 1st Army. Vi. Siberian Corps late sept, the divisions arrived in the Warsaw area from the interior and initially operated independently, by mid-October they were controlled by Vi Siberian Corps staff. 
Units of Cavalry Corps Novikov mid-October arrived in Warsaw. 4th Army. Commander, Alexei Ivet. Grenadier Corps. 3. Caucasus Corps. 16. Corps. Ivangorod Fortress Garrison. Ural Cossack Division. Cavalry Corps Novikov. 9th Army. Commander, Platon Lechitsky. Guard Corps. 18. Corps. 14. Corps. 13th Cavalry Division, Guards Secret Cavalry Brigade. 5th Army. Commander, Pavel Pulf. 17. Corps. 25. Corps. V Corps. 80th Infantry Division. 1st Don Cossack Division. Chapter 5 Section 2, Central Powers Forces. 9th Army Commander, Paul von Hindenburg. Guard Reserve Corps. 11. Corps. 17. Corps. 20. Corps Landwehr Corps Wusch. Combined Corps Frommel. Landsturm Brigades Rintelen, Hoffmann, and Westernhagen. 1st Army Commander, Victor Dankel. I Corps. V Corps. X Corps. 37th Honved Infantry Division and 106th Austrian Landstrom Division, 100th Hungarian, 101st Hungarian, and 110th Hungarian Landstrom Brigades. Cavalry Corps Corda. Reinforcements? Early October, 43rd Lantia Division. Cavalry Corps Hauer. The 23rd of October, 11th Cavalry Division. Chapter 6, Additional Reading. Tucker, Spencer the Great War, 1914-18. Glaze Horstenau, Edmund of Sterreich Ungarn's Letzter Krieg 1914-1918. Erster Band. Das Kriegsjahr 1914. Bleibtreu, Karl Bismarck, Band 3. Zapolovsky, Vladimir, Zapolovsky, Mikola. Der Bingungskrieg und der Mittleren Weichsel von Oktober bis Anfang November 1914. Palask, Zeitschrift für Militargesticht, Organ der Osterreichischen Gesellschaft für Herzkunde. Volume 76, pages 113 to 125. ISBN 978 3902721